Hi, I'm Christine. Our topic for today is wearing our colors once our hair silvers. What takes place at whatever age it might happen is that a color area in our overall appearance changes to a neutral area. We want to know how to maintain vibrancy in our overall appearance. What is it that people who look terrific with silver hair are doing that is so right? Our model for today is Betty White, who passed away recently at 99 years of age. There was so much to love and admire about Betty, one of which was her ability to use color to express and define herself. And as a result, she became more and more beautiful as the years went by. Her charm, her optimism, her sense of humor, her love of animals, her ability to engage with the world were communicated the minute she walked into a room in large part because Betty knew that color talks. Does our season, our group of natural coloring, change when our hair silvers? Do men silver better than women? Does silver look old? Is there such a thing as across the board advice for silver hair? Well, we're going to talk about each one of these and the ideas in today's video will apply whatever your season happens to be. You would just use the colors in your palette. But since Betty is our reference person for today, I'll say that I see some kind of winter blended with spring. Betty was a natural brunette. Hair color does not determine season, but it does influence how our skin tone, eyes, cosmetics, clothing colors appear. It's interesting how the dress reads a little soft, meaning there's a bit of gray wash in the color. It's a little bit dusty compared with the red of the lipstick, which is a bright or a clear red, meaning pure color pigment. The only comment about the dress is I think Betty could wear a redder red. It was 1975 when Betty went blonde for the Mary Tyler Moore show and then she stayed that way. And fortunately over time the shades of blonde evolved to become colors that suited her. Folks have said to me, well I can't be a winter on blonde. Well first Betty wasn't a natural blonde. She was a credible blonde. Fair skin, blue eyes probably helped a lot. Our season doesn't change when we color our hair any more than hair dye changes our eye color. And second, yes, a winter can be a natural blonde. It is not a common presentation at all. It happens mostly in bright winter, the winter that is blended with spring. Have seen it a few times in true winter. Let's start the way a real color analysis experience would with some broad comparisons. On the left, the top looks summery. You see violet pastels, soft white in the print. And despite the blues repeating the eye colors and the darker areas in the stripes, if this is around the brightness and darkness ceiling for summer, I would be reaching for the winter drapes just to see what happens. Like that red dress at the start, the summer just soft color, let's say, doesn't seem enough to balance the face. Her colors, if you look at the face and think about the clothes, seem brighter or stronger somehow than what she's wearing. On the right, in the royal blue, well, you got $500, you can only buy one. Which one are you going to buy? I pick the jewel tone sapphire blue. Both these pictures are 1985, so this woman is the same age. This woman here on the right, she's supported by her clothing. She is better balanced. She's not appearing way out in front of her clothes or somehow separate from them. Face is more illuminated. Face is more evenly colored. The eyes move forward in the face. The skin tone around the eyes and nose is more even. Cosmetics and hair colors are actually about the same in these two pictures too, and they look cleaner and fresher on the right. This is a nice hair color. She could wear it in a top. She could wear it as an eyeshadow highlight. She could wear it as the color of gold jewelry. If you couldn't wear your hair color as apparel, well then why would you put it on your head? There's no place to hide from that. I mentioned earlier that Betty might be a winter blended with some spring. What about spring on its own? She does look like a blue-eyed blonde, which is a kind of traditional presentation for spring, and you do see it sometimes. Spring alone, I think, is too warm. The effect of blending the features. The eyes, nose, and mouth are less defined in the face. Well, now that already happens with age. Why would we emphasize it with our color choices? We want to look present, vibrant, and in focus. Here we see Betty next to Valerie Harper, who appears to have autumn's type of warmth and has made a really impressive hair color choice. 
You can see the earthy orange tones in Valerie's skin compared with the very light and clear yellows in Betty's skin tone. Many winters have this very light skin tone, not a lot of natural color visible, let's say, until they wear their clothing and makeup. And then you think, wow, like where did you come from? <laughs> but this is not pale in the sense of unhealthy. Light and clear is their normal. I see jewelry and accessories like that scarf works because the woman is already that way. Wouldn't look so good on Valerie. Would not look nearly so expensive because there's nothing in Valerie to connect with that. Does season change as we get older? I would say no, but without having some kind of data or measurements to back that up, it's just an opinion, it's not a fact. Well, what kind of data? Well, that's say 40 men or women analyzed 20 years apart. I don't have those kinds of numbers, but what my eyes do see is many, many different shades of silver hair and gray and white. I see a huge variety in skin tones over different age groups, and I see eyes that do not change color over the years. And over my own experience, people, men and women, analyze into all 12 seasons with the same kind of distribution as they do in their younger years or throughout their life. When you think about it, for the season to change, our pigments would have to mutate. Our hemoglobin would have to mutate. That's where our reds come from. And the other pigments in our skin tones would actually have to chemically change for the season change. Well, what would nature do that for? Features may soften in shape, but that doesn't mean that they soften or fade in colors. Shape and colors are two separate things, but it's easy to get them crossed over. The thickness of skin may change. The composition of skin may change, meaning how much water it contains. And so we may perceive the colors differently. But how the colors react to other colors, which is what the color analysis is looking for and measuring, that doesn't change. The natural looking lip color and blush don't change, but they might look brighter when this area becomes a neutral color, same as a green blouse might look brighter when you remove the green or black jacket and put on a white or gray one, but the green blouse hasn't changed. It's just our perception of it that has. A woman might say, I'm light. I have light hair, light skin tone, and light eye colors, so I need to wear all light color. Not necessarily. Lightness might look like her defining color property, but I'm suspicious it's not the whole story. Anyone who works with humans can recognize times when how things look and how things are is not the same way. It's kind of like how things should be and how things are is not the same thing, but you got to participate in the world as it is. This is missing something to support the head. Might be darkness, might be brighter colors, might be both. We don't know that without trying them. A woman might also decide, I'm older now, and so I look softer and need softer color, as with the pants. Well, visually, this is one of the most aging decisions that you can make. It's how we fail to be noticed. If you're a soft season, sure, wear your soft colors. You're the person where they do look vibrant and they do look lovely. The softness in your coloring and the softness in the clothes, it's like they cancel one another out. And what comes forward is this beautiful color. And then the woman on the right walks in. Now, we are going to have some fun. <laughs> They're going to be lining up to pour us drinks and bring us snacks. She's not trying to be anyone but herself. There's a magnetism to that. I would be running to get the seat next to hers. I don't find this looks eccentric at all. I think it looks creative and expensive. Prefer the warmer white. Makes for a warmer complexion. It looks healthier and helps the hair look less yellow. On the left, the face seems a little pale or powdery. She is pale, but the cool blouse is exaggerating it, causing her skin to appear almost bleached. What do you prefer, all over light or some darkness? I enjoy the bit of black or darkness, either one, in the pants and in the print of the jacket. The clothing gives her more identity. It balances the colors in her skin. It's, I find it gives her a less fragile look. If I look at the face and think about the lower half, the black is very belonging. I understand its role in this appearance. Even without knowing your season, guidelines for what suits you can help make better choices. For Betty, bright color is looking like it's going to be on our list. Let's say these were Betty's questions for us. I really love black and white, especially for evening. Are they still good choices for me? 
One challenge with videos is they speak to a very wide audience. The advice has to be general and the question is also general. So I would ask you a few more questions. The first one would be, how did black and white become your go-to colors? Betty says, I was analyzed. 30 years ago in a four season system, they said winter. I started wearing a lot of black and white for events. I didn't really think about how it looked on me. I didn't even know how to think about it, but it was easy and formal and I fit in with everyone else in the room wearing black. I'm not attached to it. If you could give me something better, not bad at all. I can see why Betty likes this combination. It works with the hair color. The diamonds are pretty next to the skin. She looks sophisticated and friendly. She looks powerful, but she looks approachable. Black and white is possibly a touch white or ghostly in the skin tone. What about changing the proportions between the two? Do you prefer more light area or more dark? I prefer more light area. So there's another guideline. We know about bright color probably on our list. Another one might be limiting the amount of black or darkness. Also on the left, better for having colors along with the black and white. And a print that meets the energy in this face. On the right, more black doesn't appear better, but I do appreciate that there's light framing the face. As we age, lightness framing the face might flatter everybody. Color framing the face, beautiful. Very flattering for the neck and the jaw, and it picks up the bloom in the cheeks. Playing with the proportions of black and color rather than black and white, is it any different? The wax figure better in all pink, or do you prefer there being some black? I come to the same conclusion as I did with the white. I like some black or darkness. It adds crispness to the look. It creates movement. It puts more structure in the top and it just makes a more complete and interesting outfit. Is black a problem worn this way? Half the body, lower half? How would it be a problem? She might look heavy in the lower half. I don't think that's happening. Betty's coloring from what I can tell, doesn't mind a little bit of black. In fact, it benefits from it. Here's an example of the amount of black or darkness being too much. Creates a bit of a short wide effect, maybe a little bit heavy or solid. She looks fun and bright, but her clothing is the opposite. The clothing colors just don't repeat her clarity or her lightness or her translucency. She's just illuminated, but the clothing colors are heavy like a tapestry. Beautiful clothes, but the jacket appears to have been made with another woman in mind. It doesn't say anything about this woman. It doesn't even recognize her, it seems. It's another question I would ask our client. Are there colors that you gravitate towards besides black and white? Oh yeah, red. Fruit punch red, not sangria. Oh great, now this woman is moving towards herself. She looks lively, she looks healthy. She wears shine easily. I'm starting to miss it when it's not there. Up close, the eye color is still very strong. Her hair and brows are warm, either too warm or at the upper limit for this woman because the brows are peach. And also it's hard to see where the face ends and the hair begins. And so the face seems wider and less defined. Well, that's already one of those aging effects we talked about. Why would we compound that with our choice of hair color? I don't see any advantage to the yellow. And as her colorist, I would suggest transitioning from this color over to a cooler blonde, over to her natural silver in about a year. And then Betty says, I also love blue and I love turquoise. They are my second go-to colors. Here on the left, hair and brows are warmer. Strawberry blonde looks good. I think she looks great. I like the dress that she's wearing. Prefer this color of hair seems more realistic than the very yellow blonde that we saw earlier. And then on the right hand side, a cooler silver. The silver allows the eye color to gain energy. And I think that's the best thing about silver hair in the later years is how much it emphasizes or allows the eye color to seem intensified. Could be coming from the dress here too. And if you silvered young, the best thing about it is how young your skin looks. Love the small areas of darkness without using black. They slenderize, they add interest, and they add movement compared with how a solid color would look. Would look. I've heard people say that silver hair looks old. Well, to me, it's the belief that sounds outdated in the sense that less and less people share this belief. It's easy to sound original by going around saying the opposite of everybody else. But in this case, I think it's actually true. The opinion is more aging or dated than the silver hair because there is too much evidence to the contrary. There are too many women with silver hair at the top of their game. 
Between the two, the Betty with influence and the most confidence is the one on the right. Should you wear gray when you have gray hair? You read about avoiding gray, beige, other neutrals. Overall, the colors that suited you before, including makeup, but not including hair color, will suit you after. Colors that did not suit you before silver hair are not going to start suiting you now. People who are drained by beige and gray, either they never had those colors in their palette in the first place, or they were not wearing their version. You could be wearing your perfect shade of gray, but it might repeat some of the colors in your hair so well that you can't get any separation between the hair and the clothing. It might look like one is blending into the other, which could happen if you wear your hair color at any age in any season. So to get that separation, you would add color elements like a top underneath a jacket, or you might add metallic elements, a brooch or a detail in the construction of the clothing. This dusty lilac under the brightness of this skin tone it does look older. Let's say the look is losing energy or losing vibrancy. There would be better options of gray, colors of an airplane, maybe a little warmer, colors of gray granite. But mauve tones, although you can read about them and you can see them a lot with older women, is not a good choice for this particular woman. Is there such a thing as across the board advice with silver hair? No. No, I don't think so. There are too many versions of it. it. would be the same as across the board advice if you have blonde hair or one size fits all advice with blue eyes. There are just too many variations. Silver hair is not automatically cool. It can have any warmth. It's just a switch to a neutral color in your same palette of colors that you always were. Here, next to pure white, you can see that Betty's hair is a little creamier than that. She also has fantastic eyebrows here. They're perfect for the face. Great with the hair, the eye color, the cosmetics, the blush. They're just appropriate. They define the eye area without drawing too much of our attention to it. There's something that I struggle with when I speak with clients about hair color, and I can feel it happening here too, and that's taking the time to acknowledge the woman's feelings. Hair color can be a sensitive topic, possibly because it's there for long enough to get attached to our identity. I have said to clients, you don't hire me to take care of your feelings. You hire me to give you accurate color information, even if it means changing some of the choices that you're currently making. Feelings about hair color or any other aspect of appearance can't be untangled in an afternoon with a color consultant. But I think that they are very important to express and I have every kind of respect for the fact that they matter. They just took a while to get there and they're going to take a while to go back. And we can feel that our dignity or our sex appeal is at stake. My partner likes me better with dyed blonde hair. Oh, well, does that mean that they don't like me as well with my own hair color? What's wrong with me the way that I am? Or we can feel that our credibility is at stake. I work with a young audience and they won't take me seriously with white hair. I wish we had time to talk about these important feelings in a 22 minute video because they're half the hair color conversation and they're half the road that you're going to walk to get to a hair color you feel beautiful and empowered with. Just to say that it is not our job to manage other people's opinions. It's not our job to control what age they think that we are. <laughs> and it's not our job to update their beliefs. It's our job to just keep making choices that bring us closer to who we are. Maybe we come face to face with the fact that it's us who thinks that gray hair is old or lacking in credibility or lacking in sex appeal. Well, that's fine. Feelings don't have to be rational. They can be there for a long time. And I think it's important to just look at them. Let them be there because it gives you so much more stability in how you use all of the information that's coming towards you. You may decide to go back to hair color. Never met anybody who did, but you can, and you're not letting anyone down, including yourself. And you can use some of the advice the consultant had regarding clothing color or cosmetics. Just saying that we know hair color is a vulnerable topic and sharing that is something that helps us understand one another better. We're now at my favorite part where we get to look at some of the choices that I thought were very beautiful. Here, the warmed white, barely warmed white. Compare it with his shirt. She looks fresh, healthy. She looks in focus. The white of the blouse is repeated in the hair highlight. Adds even more radiance to the impression. Black in the lower half, you can't see much of it, but it defines the edges of the silhouette. I can look in her eyes, I'm aware of the black, and it feels very complete. It feels very satisfying. 
The necklace repeats the eye color without being obvious about it. People really notice even the smallest areas of color. Color has a lot of energy just by being there. Picture one flower in a green garden. That's exactly where your eyes go. We uh, hear about how men's silver is so attractively compared with women. They have a few things working in their favor. Let's say one is they don't color their hair. And hair color or, or incorrect hair color can be a tremendous obstacle to having the, the best appearance you can. And number two, they've learned a couple of their color success keys over the years and they keep using them. Do you know any blue-eyed men who don't have some blue shirts? On the other hand, their appearance can become very formula and predictable over time, whereas women remain more curious and adventurous about how to use color to their advantage. And most men don't use cosmetics to liven up the face. And that can make a world of difference. I wanted to draw your attention to the eyebrows. Steely, cool, neutral brown, not too warm, great darkness at this age. And we've seen Betty with lighter brows than these. And so eyebrow color is something that may evolve over the years. And this is beautiful with her eyes. I could easily imagine a blouse in this shade of gray compared with that mauve gray that we saw earlier. Silvery blonde hair, sparkling, but realistic contrast with the brows. One's not too light and one's not too dark. The contrast range makes sense. If you're gonna do one color head to toe, we'll make a color great. This is a good darkness level without using black. She looks like a walking jewel. One color overall, when it's this bright, can be a lot of color impact, let's say, when there are no areas of neutral color. But as a color choice, I think it is Beautiful, terrific purse, too, small area of contrast, breaks up a large color area. And I like the light shoes, it relates to the hair color. And like the purse, she's using a light color to create contrast in an otherwise medium dark look. Let's finish up with one of Betty's earlier questions to us. What about black and white? Well, she's gathered her clues by now. She knows bits of black are really good. Touch of warmth, good. Prints, good. Lightness around the face, good. Shine, great if it's not too warm. And so she comes up with some ideas for how she might wear black and white. And they're both fabulous. On the left, this is not heavy or solid, thanks to only half of the look being dark. And she has added not just light, but sparkle to the light color. And so there's even more reflection of light. Well, Betty's natural skin tone reflects light. And so there's beautiful continuity without the person disappearing into their clothes. Prints. That's a discovery for Betty. So much expression, like we're in a painting, animated, friendly, just like she is. The print, it looks like movement and energy and play. The lightness of weight in the bubbles, lightness of being. And they all, this is where her clothing recognizes her. Hair color, great lips, good. Cooler hair color here. But I do not look at this woman and wish she would color her hair. To accomplish what? And what would be the trade-off for that? On the right, a giraffe print, charcoal brown, I guess, and a warmer white. It's not about being perfect all day, every day, and only wearing what's in your season. It's about making our best choices. Somewhere between conforming to the season and making the season conform to you. I have said to clients in the past, if I could solve one problem for you this week, what would it be? And your answer to that might be where you start, and you may find all your other answers are not so far away at all. I appreciate your time here today, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.